Now, another very interesting background area of physiology that we need to understand relates to the blood flow to the brain. And I'm just going to write an equation down. CPP. CPP equals MABP. Minus ICP. Of course, that means absolutely nothing at the moment. But CCP stands for cerebral perfusion pressure. That is the pressure of the blood going through the brain. And that is equal to mean arterial blood pressure the mean arterial systemic blood pressure minus the intracranial pressure. So let's imagine we're looking at the, uh, the vault of the skull here, which as we know is closed. then the blood has got to get into the vault of the skull. And uh, the vertebral arteries actually go through the foramen magnum. But let's assume that that's closed with uh, spinal cord and brain at the moment. And the, uh, the carotid arteries go in via the holes in the base of the skull. So let's imagine that they're the internal carotid arteries carrying blood into the brain, into the cranial cavity. Now, the mean arterial blood pressure is going to force blood into the cranial cavity. That is the pressure of the blood in the systemic arteries forcing its way into the cranial cavity. And that is going to tend to perfuse the mass of blood vessels located throughout the, uh, throughout the brain in the intracranial compartment. <coughs> So that's the mean arterial blood pressure. But remember, inside the brain, there is an intracranial pressure already. So let's suppose that the mean arterial blood pressure is around about uh, 100 millimetres of mercury forcing blood in. Then the intracranial pressure is going to be about 10 millimetres of mercury actually inside, inside the cranial cavity. So you've got 100 millimetres of mercury forcing in, but 10 tending to force it out. That means the perfusion pressure in the vessels in the brain is going to be that 100 pushing in, with that 10 force pushing out, so it's going to be 100 minus 10. So the cerebral perfusion pressure, the pressure of the blood in the blood vessels in the cranial cavity, is going to be equal to the mean arterial blood pressure, which is about 100, minus the intracranial pressure, which is about 10. And 100 minus 10 is going to give us a cerebral perfusion pressure of, of, of 90. So 90 is the cerebral perfusion pressure. Equals, 90 equals 100 minus 10. So the cerebral perfusion pressure, the pressure going through the blood vessels of the brain, equal to the mean arterial blood pressure resisted by the intracranial pressure, minus the intracranial pressure. And in this relatively normal case, we see that the cerebral perfusion pressure is going to be about 90 millimetres of mercury. Now this graph shows the physiological situation of uh, brain blood flow, the amount of blood flowing through the brain. And, and this would be 50% uh, of normal, this would be 100% of normal, i.e. normal blood flow through the brain, and this would represent increased levels of blood flow through the brain. And this is a really beautiful piece of physiology because we see that from blood pressures of around about 50 up to blood pressures of around about 150, the blood flow to the brain or through the brain is, is, is pretty well constant at 100% 100, uh, 100 of normal. This means that the brain is not hypoperfused until the we're not getting to hypoperfusional levels until we're around about 50 millimetres of mercury, mean arterial blood pressure. Then as mean arterial blood pressure rises, 
up to normal levels, and even as it goes beyond normal levels, we still see that the blood flow actually round about the brain, to the, to the brain, is, is still unchanged at the normal 100% level. So this is very useful because it means we don't really go faint till the blood pressure starts dropping below, say, about 60 in an otherwise healthy uh, youngish person. But if the blood pressure rises for whatever reason, there's not inc significantly increased levels of blood flow around the brain until we start getting onto very high levels of uh, blood pressure when the cerebral blood flow is increased. So this is the normal situation where blood flow is auto-regulated. The brain will regulate its own perfusion throughout a normal range, throughout a large range of uh, mean arterial blood pressures. But of course, this is describing the normal physiological situation. When there is brain injury, in many individual cases of brain injury, the ability of the brain to auto-regulate itself is actually lost. This means that if the blood pressure drops, then the cerebral perfusion pressure will drop as well because the auto-regulatory power is lost in brain injured patients. So patients with brain injuries, their cerebral perfusion pressure is dependent on their mean arterial blood pressure being high enough and their intracranial pressure being low enough to maintain cerebral perfusion. This is why it is so important in brain injured patients, if they've lost fluid and they are hypotensive, to give them fluids to restore the blood pressure. They must have a rapid restoration of normal blood pressure if their blood pressure is low. Because the cerebral perfusion pressure in the brain injured patient is completely dependent on the mean arterial blood pressure being sufficient to overcome the intracranial pressure to give normal cerebral perfusion pressures. It is not like this normal situation where the brain is able to auto-regulate. So in brain injured patients, we absolutely must maintain good levels of blood pressure. If the blood pressure drops for a period of time, the brain will become significantly hypoperfused, it will become hypoxic, and that severely worsens the prognosis. So maintain adequate levels of blood pressure in a brain injured patient as a matter of some urgency. Once a brain injury has occurred, the damage is very difficult to reverse because the brain cannot actively regenerate its own tissues. So it's very important to prevent brain injury. And to understand how to do this, let's think about the nature of brain injuries. So what we've got here is brain injuries. This is, this is the injuries that can occur to the brain. And there are two types of these. Primary brain injury and secondary brain injury. Now, the primary brain injury is the injury to the brain that occurs at the time of the accident or the trauma. So when the head is hit, when the trauma impacts on the head, that will generate a primary brain injury. It occurs at the time. So when the patient is admitted to your care, the primary brain injury has already occurred and there's nothing you can do about that. But after the primary brain injury, secondary brain injury can, de can develop. Now a secondary brain injury is any injury which occurs to the brain after the initial trauma. And these are caused by complications of the initial brain injury. And our role in healthcare is to stop the patient from developing secondary brain injuries. So the primary brain injury, we can do nothing about. It's already occurred when the patient comes into our care. Our aim is to prevent secondary brain injuries.